Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omen and today I will review the second studio album by the pop rock band Tears for Fears, song from the big chair, requested by Amy K. Um, yeah, I do like Tears for Fears, they are a good band. I think that their first, what would it be, their first four albums are pretty good. I think that's the general conception, you know, the general conception about Tears for Fears that the first four are pretty good, you know. 80s up until 90s, I believe, or early 90s, they're pretty good bands, and then after that, they went to shit. They still did two albums after that, I believe, so they have six albums in total. And this is generally regarded as their best album, so you know, there's not a big surprise there. Yeah, so we have how many tracks? I think 10. We have eight songs from there, so this is a relatively short album. I've just listened to it. Um, yeah, it's 41 minutes. Uh, I believe it is. For, uh, yeah, 41 minutes and 52 seconds, uh, bore, bordering to 42. So there you go. Um, recorded in 84, came out in uh, February 25th, 1985. So, pretty old album at this point. So, there you go. Um, how fucking old is it? 35 years old. So, 35th anniversary. The first song is Shout, which is, of course, a you know, mainstay for the band. This is like an anthem for them. This is one of the most iconic pop anthems out there. It's very iconic. It's very distinct. It is a very distinct kind of song. I love that uh, the kind of like symbol opening at the beginning. That's, uh, you know, the fucking symbols. Um, the solo towards the ending is awesome. I love the solo. Fucking awesome. Uh, shut up, Trent. Yeah, so this is just a great song. Six and a half minutes long. Six and a half minutes, glorious, epic pop song. I wish, you know, I wish we fucking, um, I wish we still had shit like this, but, you know, it's still out there, but it's way less big, of course, than it is now. You know, Shout was a major song back in the day, but, you know, we don't have songs like this anymore on this level, you know, on this mainstream success. Then we have The Working Hour, which was a good song. Uh, this song is kind of overshadowed because it's, uh, you know, it's between two of the biggest singles uh, ever by the band. Pretty much the two biggest singles by the band ever. And pretty much my two favorite songs. Um, yeah, so The Working Hour, a good song. Uh, it's actually just as long as Shout, so it's, I think they're kind of trying to recreate the feeling. It's a bit more somber, it's a bit more like lower in tone. It goes a bit more for a melancholic vibe instead of like a really like big, ambitious uh, anthem song like Shout. Uh, the Working Hour, good song, I like it, but it's of course really overshadowed because it's in between the two biggest singles the band ever did, so there you go. And then we have pretty much my favorite song the band ever did, uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Awesome song, one of my favorite songs of all time, I love the song. Um, I just love that intro, the, 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 the keyboards, the, you know, the choir, the ooh, the oohs in the back. Uh, you know, it's kind of like shout, but it kind of combines the uh, the easy listening nature of of the working hour. It kind of combines the two songs. It's kind of like shout, but it's it's um, it's less serious. It's more like having fun. Uh, it's just more like an easy going song. It's just an awesome song. Um, love the solo towards the end. Name the drums are really like great. The drums are great in the production. Uh, the song is so goddamn catchy. I've, I've played the song like to death. It's it's so good. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite pop songs ever. Love it. And then we have Mother Stop, which is the closing song of the album. And I believe the first, or the, the closing song of side one. Uh, it's the original, or it's the first single actually from the album, which is kind of weird, I think. But uh, Mother Stop is good. It's, uh, it's a bit more intimate, I think. It's a bit more like, um, you know, just intimate with the listener, I guess. It's just a bit more um, quiet, a bit more minimal, a minimalistic in approach and tone. Uh, a lot of keyboard, a lot of piano keys going on here, so I do like that about the song. It's a bit more minimal, min yeah. minimalistic, so um, you know, it kind of depends if you like that, but I personally do, so there you go. I'm not sure if I would consider it a favorite, but I probably would, yeah, probably. Uh, then we have I Believe, which is the opening of side one. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good song too, kind of combines with Mother Stock and I would say the working out, it's a bit more uh, still minimalistic but it's also a bit more upbeat in places, so you know, it's kind of an, 
improvement from Motherstock, I think. So this might be a favorite of mine. I don't know, yeah, yeah, probably is a favorite, I would say. So there you go. Uh, then we have Broken, which is kind of weird to me because we have Broken here and then we have bro uh, Broken later on again, which is weird. So I think the original Broken is probably the best one. It's kind of like a, like, you know, no pun intended, it's a, it's a Baroque pop song, you know, the genre Baroque pop. Um, it's kind of like that. I, I enjoy it, I think it's good. Um, yeah, check it out. It's pretty enjoyable, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it does kind of sound distorted in a way, kind of like disjointed, but that's kind of what makes it interesting to me. You know, Tears of Fears kind of approaches every song in a different way, which uh, you know makes keeps it interesting uh, to the to the listener. Now we have Head Over Heels slash Broken Live, which is kind of weird. I think I do really enjoy Head Over Heels. I'm not really sure about Broken again. Uh, but it does blend in with the with the head over heels pretty nicely I would say. Uh, this song is pretty catchy, pretty uh, captivating. I do really enjoy this one. Um, I think you should give it a listen too. Uh, I believe one of the biggest singles of the album besides the, the, the big two of course. So yeah, I think that this one was I believe the biggest single besides those other two. Uh, it was a pretty big hit. I think that you know, this song again it kind of combines the minimalistic approach together with um, uh, with more of an upbeat kind of nature that you know the band eventually did later here. Uh, they were more minimalistic, I would say, with Modern Stock, and they're more like open about it with I Believe and Head of Reels. So, definitely, uh, probably a favorite of mine, not definitely, but probably. Um, I am still kind of on the fence with Broken Live, I'm not sure why they edited it again, but you know, it's on there, so I guess they it's kind of on there twice. So maybe I'll put listen on one of my favorite because it, it is a longer song on the album. It's six minutes and forty eight seconds. It's quite an ambitious song. It's quite lengthy. It's quite emotional. Uh, the band goes kind of in depth about this one uh, to talk about uh, some things that I want to talk about. Uh, pretty nice bro pop kind of emotional uh, kind of tone to this one. Really nice kind of pleasant uh, tone to go out on. I would say. Um, yeah, so this is probably a fan of mine because Head Over Heels is good too, but I'm not really sure about Broken being twice on air, which, you know, it's kind of weird, but whatever. So, uh, my favorites of the album are Shout, uh, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, which is my favorite first song. I Believe and Listen, those are my, two, uh, my four favorite songs of the album. What is my least favorite song? Um, hmm, I don't know. I mean, it's all pretty good though. The whole album is pretty good. So, what would I put in my least favorites? Um, mm, I don't know. Maybe broken. But what, what version, right? What version? Because Head of Real is pretty good though. But it, you know, it's it's not a favorite of mine because it has broken on there twice, which is weird. Maybe maybe just broken. Yeah, I think broken is my least favorite song on the album because it's two and a half minutes long. It doesn't really add anything. It's it's yeah. It's, it feels like a filler track to me. So yeah, I guess broken is my least favorite song on the album. Maybe modern stock, but modern stock is at least ambitious. Broken just sounds like a filler tune to me. So yeah, very good pop album. Uh, Turf Affairs, good band, very good band. Um, check them out if you haven't already. I really like this album. This is, most likely gonna be my favorite Tears of Fears album because you, you you have the big hits on there, the, the hits that I give a shit about, so. So yeah, pretty good pop album. I, I give this album a, what would I give it? Um, I give this album a nine out of 10. It's a, it's a really good, it's a really good pop album. Really enjoyable, really nice. Um, and pretty much the, the pinnacle of the band's career, I would say, so there you go. That's my review of Songs from the Big, Songs from the Big Chair by Tears for Fears. Let me know what you, you think. I cannot fucking speak. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I've been on us. Like and subscribe to the channel on us for videos like this one. Let me know what you want to see in an upcoming video. What do you think about this uh, album by the band? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think about Tears for Fears? Do you love the band? Do you hate the band? I suppose you love them because you clicked on this video. Um, yeah, or, or you're just a fan that checks on everything I do. One of the two, I guess, or you're a weird outsider or whatever. Uh, see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. 
Check it out if you haven't already, and peace.